This is a Minecraft world, and today I'm going to be surviving 100 days in this Minecraft world in hardcore mode, meaning that the difficulty is locked on hard mode, and if you die, you don't respawn and your world is deleted forever. My goals for these 100 days were to fight the Ender Dragon, get at least enchanted diamond armor and an Elytra, start work on a custom village, and lastly, survive. That was a lot harder said than done though, just watch until the end and you'll know exactly what I mean. This video trend was initially created by Luke the Notable, whose channel will be in the description below, and I highly recommend you check out his series if you haven't already. That's it for me, and enjoy the video. Day 1. The first thing that I did was look around at my surrounding spawn. We were in a plains biome, but we also had access to some mountains and a taiga. But I thought that I saw something in the taiga roaming, and surely enough, I stumbled across civilization. I decided to get some tools from this house, which I also set up a bed in. I made sure that the villagers knew it was my house. My sign said, this is mine, my home now. Hopefully they get the message. I ran across the village raiding good stuff and got some iron armor right off the bat, in addition to some food and blocks. I also dipped my toes into the cave systems and got a few coal and iron ore. In the cave, I had my first close encounter, a skeleton with an enchanted bow right next to a spider spawner. I didn't have a shield, but I fought off the spider and skeleton with three and a half hearts left. When I got out of the cave, I used the skeleton's bones to try and get a dog, but the wolf wanted more than I had, and I had to leave him behind. And as I was exploring the surrounding area, I noticed another grass path, which led to yet another village. This one even had jack-o'-lanterns too, which I thought was kind of cool since I had never seen them in villages before. I raided this thing on day 2 and almost fell to my death. Great start to the day. I got the village's beds, workstations, and everything that had at least some value. I killed the neighborhood hunk too. Side note, I think campfires may be one of my favorite cooking blocks. Just look at how it throws the beef off. But anyways, after raiding this village, I kept exploring the area and headed west to see what biomes were in this world. And what do you know? There was a flower forest pretty close to my spawn, and I knew immediately that I had to set my base up here. I love all the colors of this biome, and I definitely prefer being around flowers than being in a taiga biome. I looked around for the perfect spot for my home, and I found this little lake, which would look great for my base once all of the trees were cleared out. So I set down my crafting table and the double chest and prepared to settle in this area. Day 3, I prepared to move my stuff out of my village home and to the flower forest. Before I left though, I changed the sign so that later on, I could remember where I stayed in my earliest days. On the way, I also noticed a ravine close to the village, and it had so much iron. I think I got close to 31 iron just from exposed iron ore here. And combined with more iron from a different cave, I got a total of 50 iron that day. Kinda crazy. I then moved in my things to the flower forest and made a shield so that I wouldn't die to any more skeletons. And I finished off my armor set with some high-waisted iron pants. I also upgraded my tools to iron and found a large spruce tree nearby, which I chopped down through the night. Day 4 I was looking for even more iron. I don't know why, I had enough to last me like a century, but I still wanted to get more just in case. Back home I turned all my iron ingots into 6 iron blocks and then deforested some trees to make space for my new home. Day 5 I wanted to get a friend, so I took some bones and went to the taiga. Luckily, my new dog only needed 2 bones to tame, and now I had a friend. Dogs aren't only cute and hardcore, but they also fight for you, so it was definitely a good idea to get one early on. I wanted him to feel special too, so I gave him an orange collar. If you want to name him, feel free to leave your name suggestions in the comments. Me and my dog decided to venture out from the forest and gather some snow, and then my dog attacked an enemy nearby in a village. And with the skeleton's bones, I managed to time yet another wolf. Day 6, I gathered my salmon from the previous day of combat and tamed a cat in the village. I also gave my new dog a blue collar because I wanted him to feel special as well. Then my two dogs started mating out of nowhere and I got an achievement for making a puppy. I genuinely don't know how that happened, but at least I had a puppy now and I'm definitely not complaining about that. And the rest of the day I spent working on the base of my base. Day 7 I was working on the walls of my home. I also finished up the floor of the home and my cat decided to sleep on my chest that night. Day 8 it was time to work on the second story, but before I did that, I used the snow blocks and a pumpkin to create a snowman. You can name all the dogs in my cat in the comments, but the snowman is 100% gonna be named Mick Blizzy. And then, it was time for a little adventure, which I took my red collared puppy for. I was planning on building a strip mine at Y level 16 to get some diamonds, but on the way down, this happened. Now that wasn't really too close, but I was still terrified falling into that open room of mobs. What scared me even more though, was the fact that my dog fell in too. Luckily, as I emerged from the surface, my dog teleported to me, unharmed from the drop. 
Day 9 I still wanted diamonds so I sat my dog down and visited a nearby cave. This cave was right under my house and it was absolutely mammoth. Just look at this thing. I got some redstone, gold, lapis, and eventually found a ravine and then this happened. A creeper fell from the ceiling and blew up, leaving me at half a heart. If I was any closer to the explosion, I would have died before it was even day 10. The next day there was no way I was going mining after being scarred from the previous night. Instead, me and my red collared dog were venturing out north in search of a specific sapling. On the way there though, we passed a village which had a new guy named Mason. I used to think Mason was an idiot since you can literally take his clay in his home and sell it back to him. But in this world, Mason was an absolute angel and you could make so many emeralds by just selling him clay. Day 11, I was mining more clay to sell to Mason. The village was near a river, so I figured taking some clay would be an easy way for some cold hard emeralds. And after selling all of my clay and leveling him up, I got a total of 18 emeralds. But me and my dog had to continue on and find our saplings. And luckily, soon after, we found the biome, the Dark Oak Forest. Dark Oak is one of my favorite wood types by far, and I wanted to get as many blocks and saplings from here as I could. Day 12, me and my dog had gotten enough Dark Oak to return home, and on the way, we of course stopped off to level up Mason. And it was a good thing that we decided to do that, because he sold me Cyan Terracotta as one of his traits. Cyan Terracotta is 100% the best terracotta in the whole game, and there was no way I was leaving without getting as much of it as I could. So I sprinted back to the river, grabbed as much clay as my pockets could hold, and got those cyan blocks. Also, Todd failed the vibe check, and he deserved death. Day 13, I mined all the clay in the river, so I got more emeralds by selling mason andesite. I know my time in this world is limited, but there was no way in hell that I'm not taking cyan terracotta. In the end, I got 19 blocks in total, and locked mason inside so that I could trade with him in the future. When I got back home, I planted the dark oak saplings, and did some work on the second story and walls of my home. And the next day, work on the home continued, and I also found a rabbit's foot outside of my home for some reason. I also used that dark oak that I got to make a roof. I'm absolutely garbage at building roofs, but hey, I tried my best. Days 15 to 17, I was still building the roof and finishing up the house. I have no idea why this took two days, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Day 18, I had fully recovered from the creeper scare about nine days ago, and I was ready to go caving again. I still had zero diamonds at this point and kind of wanted to progress. Luckily, I found a ravine, which had some exposed diamond ore. It was only a 5 vein, but that was still enough to make a diamond pickaxe and enchanting table. I made the pickaxe immediately, found some obsidian, and got mining, and I got enough to make another portal and enchanting table. Back at my base, I smelted all the gold ore that I found on the mining trip and made 3 golden apples. Gapples come in clutch when I'm on low health, so it's good to keep them on hand. Also, I used the last 2 diamonds on an enchanting table. Day 19, I brought my orange collared dog with me to Mason's village again. I don't think I even need to say what I bought while I was there. But the real reason I went there was because I had to go back to the Dark Oak Forest since I ran out of Dark Oak saplings and needed more. Day 20, I noticed some llamas nearby the Viome, so I did what any normal person would do and gave them some streetwear. And may I just say, SHEESH! I also got some vines from the nearby swamp biome and collected some lily pads in the most fun way possible. I know it's pretty much common knowledge, but it is way too fun collecting lily pads by just ramming them with your boat. Days 21 to 22, I got sidetracked, again. For some reason, I decided to go out in the ocean with a boat, and without even trying to, I found an ocean monument. I decided I didn't want to raid this thing yet though, since I was completely unprepared. I also found a few shipwrecks, which gave me some great loot as well as some buried treasure maps. And with some booty lining on the maps, I got some nicer loot from the chests. My dog even made a friend while I was raiding a chest, but unfortunately, she died from third degree burns shortly thereafter. My dog was heartbroken, but I wasn't. I got a ton of emeralds out of that treasure chest. I was so happy. Day 23, I planted some more dark oak saplings on my land and cleared out a spot on the beach to set up my nether portal. Portals are really noisy, so I decided to put it away from my home. And day 24, I was preparing to go into the nether. I made some golden boots so that piglins wouldn't throw hands and then entered the portal to hell. I spawned in another waste next to a crimson forest, but I thought that I saw something immediately to my left. I went to go investigate and somehow I hit the jackpot. The nether fortress was literally 20 blocks from my portal. I quickly located the blaze spawner and slashed them to get some blaze rods. However, I proceeded to get overconfident, leading to this moment. I got down to two hearts there. My heart was absolutely racing after that moment. But for some reason, I decided to try and get some more blaze rods, which led to... 
an identical situation occurred. Two hearts yet again because I wanted some blaze rods. Logically, I left as soon as I could because I didn't want to die. Day 25, I mined some nether gold ore and traded with the local piglins. Luckily, I got a fire resistance potion, which refilled my confidence enough and allowed me to go back to kill blazes. This time I went to a different blaze spawner since the other one was apparently cursed. At first, it was going great and I was getting a ton of rods, until this happened. Thankfully, I had a gapple on me and I killed the rest of the piglins who were after my blood. But with the fire resistance, I managed to kill a few more blazes and got all the blaze rods I need for a long time. Day 26, I needed a change from almost dying three times in two days, so I decided to excavate an area near my home and build a little wheat farm. I used some of my leftover spruce wood and made a little stream through it, and even though I suck at building, I think that it turned out pretty okay. Day 27, I chopped down that dark oak tree down and finally finished off the roof of my home. Day 28, I realized I still had zero diamonds, so I ventured out to the strip mine. My luck was trashed the whole 100 days, but I fortunately found two diamond ore. Pitiful amount, but still better than zero. Day 29, this skinny man was holding a grass block which I wanted, so I clapped his bony caboose and got it in my inventory. Me and my blue collar dog also visited some tall spruce trees to gather some wood, and then we found a new village near the taiga biome. I was hoping for some diamonds in this blacksmith, but my unluckiness carried on and this chest was crafted of literal garbage. Day 30, me and my dog had to leave the village and I worked on a small dog house for my dogs. And when I say small, I mean small. Hopefully they don't have claustrophobia because there is barely enough room to breathe in there. Day 31, I finished planting my seeds in the wheat farm and made a new area for planting carrots. I stuck with the same design for this one, and I don't know what these walls are called, but I like the look of it for holding the crops. I also decorated the farm with roses because as I said before, I'm a sucker for color in this biome. Day 32, I was looking for diamonds again. With my luck, do you think I found any? Of course, the answer is yes, I found three. Thank God, I would have quit this game if I didn't find any that day. Day 33, I was making some bookshelves. I already had an enchanting table and I wanted to get fortune on a pickaxe so that if I could find more diamond ore, I could get twice as many diamonds. And to speed up leather production, I also started a mini cow farm next to the carrots. Day 34, I was chopping some cows to get some leather. I also brought my red dog on this trip because he was hungry for some red meat. And of course, what's a trip to the village without a traditional campfire meat throw? Days 35 to 36, I found some bee nests and collected my first honey bottle ever. Keep in mind that this was the first time I've ever done this in my Minecraft career. After my first success, I decided to find some more beehives to collect even more honey bottles. But then, this happened. Turns out bees don't like you taking their honey and will poison you if you do so. Who would have known? Not me, clearly. But after some wiki browsing, I figured out that campfires don't aggravate bees, and I collected more honey peacefully. Also, shears apparently give you honeycombs if you use them. I'm sure everybody knew this, but I had zero idea that this was a thing in 1.15 and above. Day 37, I greeted McBlizzy. He was bored in his enclosure, but his rent was overdue and I needed money. I also built a mini storage area upstairs and finally filled in the windows of my home with glass. It had also been a fat minute since I last traveled, so I took my blue collar dog on a long walk. I wanted to find a specific biome, and it took two full days of walking just to find one. But we finally found it. A desert. And the desert was insanely lucky because there was a village with a desert temple inside of it. Kind of like my dad's- No, let's skip that one actually. Of course, I raided the desert temple first, and there wasn't really any good loot in here. Ross Walker was okay, but I didn't need it at that moment. Days 39 to 40, the biome luck skyrocketed because there was a Badlands right next to the desert. And Badlands are literally all terracotta. And in case you haven't noticed already, I love terracotta way too much. Side note, look at the size of this cactus. Comment something with the words big cactus if you made it to this point. That way I'll know who stuck around. I mined up some rails from an exposed mine shaft here and the chest mine carts were goaded. I managed to get two diamonds in an efficiency five book from one and two diamonds from the next one. And with my total of nine diamonds, I decided to invest in a diamond chest plate. Day 41, I was slaughtering more animals to get leather. I really wanted to enchant soon, but I needed level 30 enchants first. Days 42 to 43, I was sailing out for more treasure chests and shipwreck loot. I managed to get a solid amount of iron, gold, and even some diamonds. I also murdered more cows, of course. Day 44, I placed all the bookshelves that I had and enchanted my diamond pickaxe. Thankfully, I got efficiency 4, fortune 2, and I'm breaking 3 on it. Hopefully, that means we can get diamond armor. 
because I still only had a chest plate. And that is, uh, that's, that's pitiful, really. Day 45, I used three more diamonds I got from Shipwrecks to make a shiny diamond axe. And the day after, I enchanted the axe and got efficiency four, and I'm breaking three. Not too shabby. I also wanted to get some more ender pearls to make eyes of ender, since I wanted to slay the dragon very soon. Also, my pinky finger almost fell off of my hand while bridging over this lava pool, because I was terrified that I was going to fall on the lava. But by using some Neanderthal hiding tactics, I managed to get 8 pearls in total from the warped forest nearby. And since I already had some blaze rods, I made a total of 9 eyes of ender. And the rest of the day, I excavated a new area near my home for reasons you'll see later. Days 47 to 49 started terribly. I made the mistake of angering this enderman, and this happened. I ran out of food at the worst possible time, and the Enderman got me down to one and a half hearts. If I had ran out of food just one second earlier, my entire world would have been deleted. But luckily, I got in water and safely killed the Enderman. After that encounter, me and my orange collared dog took a long stroll to the desert again, and I saw a new biome, a jungle. More specifically, a bamboo jungle. I ran to it as fast as I could and chopped down some of the bamboo. And there was also a jungle temple nearby, which I decided to raid. The loot in here was so bad that I was honestly more interested in the sticky pistons and redstone, to be honest. Day 50, I found a dungeon and I took some loot from the chests. Also, the video's half over, so, you know, maybe consider that you're subbed. Okay, thanks. Days 51 to 52, I was exploring a Badlands mineshaft, which I used to strip mine in hopes of finding some shiny blue diamonds. And fortunately, my strip mine intersected with a mineshaft corridor, which led me straight to some diamond ore. It was a 6 fade, but with my fortune 2 pickaxe, I got 13 diamonds in total. Things were starting to look up. And speaking of looking up, a nearby corridor had even more diamond ore on the ceiling. This was another 6 vein, leading to another 13 diamonds and bringing my total to 26. I was so happy that I resurfaced immediately before realizing that something was missing. My orange collared dog. So back to the strip mines I went and I found him sitting down in a random tunnel. Just having a nice time, really. Day 53, a new man named Mason wanted some clay, and I sold him all that I had, gaining me 29 emeralds. And the rest of the day, I spent trying to get a mending villager. I actually got the trade at one point, but it was 34 emeralds, and I wanted a better price. So like an idiot, I reset his trades. This continued well into day 54, but ultimately, I agreed to get a silk touch trade for 10 emeralds. It wasn't a terrible trade, but it wasn't mending. Day 55, I planted the new bamboo that I got and made a new diamond sword and full set of diamond armor. Everyone else doing this trend got a diamond set on like day 10, but I just managed to get it. I don't care if I was late getting the new diamond armor. I was still super happy. Was a little bit sad though, I won't lie. I then enchanted some of the armor and got protection 3 on the chest plate and leggings. Day 56, I genuinely forgot that I had a cow form, so I decided to breed them. I also went to the nether to get some quartz and traded with a piglin, who gave me 4 ender pearls which meant that I could go to the stronghold very, very soon. Day 57, I used the court that I mined to make an igloo for McBlizzy. But in order to move him, I had to melt him. Melt him. Not kill. Melt him. Day 58, McBlizzy moved in and he seemed to like his new igloo. With the ender pearls I got from the piglin a few days ago, I made 12 eyes of ender and I began looking for the ultimate stronghold. It went west, and I brought my red collar dog on the adventure to the dangerous dungeon. Unfortunately, I got distracted by a shipwreck though, and I ended up searching for a buried treasure instead. Day 59, I was following the treasure map and got some goodies from the chest, but I had to continue to the stronghold. Day 60, I had to use a lot more eyes to find the stronghold, but eventually, I found the structure deep below a birch forest. It didn't take too long to find the spawner room, but unfortunately, I was just shy of enough eyes to finish off the portal, so I had to come back later with more. Day 61, I lost my dog again, and he was just chilling in a random tunnel nearby. I have no idea why these dogs just like vibing in random spots. Day 62 to 65, I got my remaining three eyes of ender. I also enchanted a diamond shovel and a bow, and got solid enchantments on both. I was gonna fight the dragon very soon, but I wanted to be better prepared. So I started work on a very small project first. I wanted to make a designated area just for blacksmith related stuff, like anvils, stone cutters, and smithing tables. So I decided to make a little blacksmith close to my home. When I finished, it looked like this. I liked it, but I thought it looked a little bit plain. So to fix that, I added a giant forge using a bunch of different stone types, as well as an external chimney, and it definitely made the build look a hundred times better. 
I'm no green, but hey, at least I wasn't building a dirt blacksmith. Day 66, I was adding smooth stone to the floor of the blacksmith and adding in all the workstations and blocks that I wanted in here. To end off the day, I farmed some wheat and forced cows to reproduce. Day 67, I added lanterns to the blacksmiths and gathered a ton of wool, which would be turned into beds. Why do I need eight beds, you may ask? To mine in the nether. Beds explode in the nether, which sometimes exposes ancient debris. So I used all of these beds to try and get some. Unfortunately though, I had no luck finding any debris on that day. Day 68, I made some golden apples, farmed the carrots, farmed the weep, and stripped the sheep of their wool. Day 69 to- <laughs> that's a funny number. To 71, I was trading emeralds for bricks with Mason. I wanted bricks for a future build, which you'll see in a little bit. I also enchanted my sword and got sharpness 3 and knockback 2, which is kinda garbage. I then made a concerning amount of beds and blew them all up in the nether. Luckily, this time I got some ancient debris while blast mining, and left with a total of 6 debris. Day 72, I immediately smelted the 6 debris and got my first netherite ingot. I also found a phantom membrane in my chest, probably from my cat, and used it to brew some slow falling potions. I was going to need these potions when I go to the end and fight the dragon. I then decided to mine a bit and this occurred. That was a block clutch and a half man. There were so many creepers there and I nearly fell into lava. But instead of diamonds on this trip, I only found a buttload of redstone. Day 73. Campfire meat throw time. I also enchanted my boots and got the absolute godly boots. Prot 4, Unbreaking 3, and Depth Strider 3, these boots were insane. I had to thin the herd too. They were mooing too loud for my taste. Day 74, I went on vacation to Mason's Village for one of the last times in this episode. Side note, these boots were absolutely amazing and water. They're like Air Force 3000s. I brought a lectern and eventually got a villager to sell mending for 32 emeralds. Ideally, I wanted it for 10, but I decided to take the trade anyways. I sold some clay to Mason and sold sticks to Fletcher's for more emeralds, which allowed me to buy three mending books in total. I also brought my blue collared dog to the village and sat him down. Remember this moment? It'll come back later. Day 75, I got barely enough emeralds to get another mending book, and I left the village with four in total. And after enchanting the final piece of armor with protection and unbreaking, I was feeling confident as ever, and I knew that I was almost ready to defeat the mighty Ender Dragon. Day 76, this cow got me to level 30, and I disenchanted my crappy knockback's diamond sword, and re-enchanted it, only to get the exact same sword. Literally the same enchantments, everything. I also went back to the village, and guess who was sitting in the villager's home? It was my blue collar dog. I gotta stop sitting them down in random spots, man. I'm gonna eventually lose a lot of them. Day 77, I traded my final emeralds to get two more mending books. I also leveled up my Fletcher, hoping that he'd trade me a good enchanted bow. But unfortunately, his bow was the worst thing I'd ever see, and I ghosted his dumb butt. Day 78, I disenchanted my sword yet again and re-enchanted, hoping for sharpness this time. I'll just let this clip play out. I stared at this for 5 minutes, I'm not even lying. I was ready to delete the world at this point. I got the exact same sword 3 times in a row. I'm telling you, I'm the most unlucky Minecraft player, and this sword just proves that. But after my 5 minute rage, I went to the Spruce Village and got another Fletcher, but instead of selling 6 to this one, I decided to purchase a lot of arrows for my bow. I then visited my first home and stored everything that wouldn't assess me in the dragon fight. I got some more blocks, sat my puppy down, and embarked on my final adventure to the stronghold and the end dimension. If this fight did not go well, these moments may be my last in this entire world. Day 79 to 80, I found where I marked my portal room and dug down. I placed the final three eyes and ignited the portal. I stared into the void knowing that if I mess this up, my world will be gone forever. But I worked up the courage to jump and I descended into the end. I mined my way out from an encased platform and proceeded to shoot the end crystals of the island, which rehealed the dragon's health. When the last crystal was broken, I slowly floated to the nest and shot at the dragon with my bow. And when it perched, I swung my crappy sword in its face to damage it even more. And with the final bow shot, the dragon erupted into a magenta starburst.
The dragon dropped tons of XP as well, bringing me up to level 69. Nice. I also stole the dragon egg using a torch, made a makeshift enderman farm, and proceeded to locate the end gateway, which had spawned right after I killed the mighty beast. And as I teleported through the gateway, I cranked my resident distance to the max, and to my surprise, an end city and an end ship were only a couple hundred blocks away. My finky finger was sore while bridging in the nether, but over the void, I damn near broke my finger. This bridging was terrifying. I was greeted by shulkers at the entrance of the end city, and upon being hit by their bullets, I levitated up into the sky. I defeated them quite easily, but this dumb enderman dropped me to six hearts, but I managed to kill it too. Within the end city, I was bombarded by shulkers and their levitation bullets, but I killed them all and was rewarded with some great end city loot. I proceeded to get up as high as I could and bridged a few blocks toward the end ship. My plan to get there was simple. Get close to the end ship, let a shulker bullet hit me, and levitate across the void into the ship. And thank goodness, the plan actually worked. In the end ship, I defeated the final shulker box and was awarded with an insane iron pickaxe, oars, enchanted armor, and most notably, the elytra. The wings which would allow me to fly across the atmosphere of Minecraft. I also did not forget to take the dragon head back to the overworld, because I've seen so many people do that and it annoys me every single time. And using some shulker shells I obtained, I made a few shulker boxes to store some extra inventories from my inventory. And then, the most terrifying moments in these 100 days happened. I'll let this play out. To summarize that minute of terror, I was repeatedly hit by shulker bullets, thus levitating me into the air higher and higher, leaving me with almost no control. Every time I had some measure of control, I was macked back out into the end sky. Luckily, I had a water bucket, and I clutched and managed to escape the wrath of the blocky mob. As I left, I teleported through the gateway, and then finally jumped into the end portal to watch the 27 minute end credits and end poem, acknowledging every single worker who worked on the game. Nah, I'm just playing. I didn't spend more like 10 seconds on that screen. Day 81, I grabbed my dog from the village and brought him home and decided to chop down my dog's house. It was just way too small and they deserved more than a little closet. So the rest of the day, I built a new home for my puppies. And I also placed the dragon egg in the only acceptable way. Days 82 to 83, I moved my dogs into their new mini home and my dogs seemed to enjoy the new space. So much in fact that they made a child. Interesting. I gave this one a magenta collar so I could identify her easily, and remember to name her in the comments below. I then went back into the nether fortress for some blaze rods, and what's a trip to the fortress without a near-death experience? You may not have been able to tell, but I actually got down to one and a half hearts there. With my newly obtained blaze rod, I made an ender chest, which allowed me to finally equip my elytra and get my shulker box from the end city. And to finish off day 83, I took to the skies with my new wings and looked at my base from above for the first time. And it looked fantastic. Small, but fantastic. Day 84 to 86, I disenchanted my sword again and tried getting better enchants. The first sword was terrible, but the second sword was fine, so I just decided to take it. I then put mending on my pickaxe and named it Pickaxley and put mending on my elytra so that it wouldn't break in the future while flying. And I sheared some more sheep to get more beds, and I think you know where I'm taking these. That's right, the nether. I blew up like 18 beds and got 4 ancient debris in total, which was enough for another netherite ingot. And that ingot was quickly used on Pick Astley. I also re-enchanted my diamond chestplate and got prot 4 and I'm breaking 3. And with the better chestplate, I turned that one into netherite as well. And to finish off day 86, I did some covering and expanding of my land using some dirt. 
Day 87, I met another Todd, which you know what that means. He had to die. Flying to the Badlands took a ton shorter than walking, and I got a ton of terracotta while I was here. And thank goodness for shulker boxes, because I stored a ton of terracotta in there without clogging up my inventory too much. On my journey, I also managed to tame a parrot in the bamboo jungle. But unfortunately, she wouldn't teleport to me while I was flying, so I had to leave her in the jungle. I'll come back to her. It's okay. Days 88 to 93, I didn't think I'd done enough in these 100 days. I mean, I've definitely done a lot, but I didn't really have much to show for it. Which is why I started a new build, a library. This would hold the enchanting table and some items that were valuable to me. Day 94, I added a staircase and some supports, and this is what the build was looking like. I was definitely liking the look of it and thought that it added a ton to my plot. I did some additional detailing on the outside and took the liberty of adding some paths to the farms and buildings on my complex. Day 95, I made a trophy case to display my dragon egg in the library. And I finally finished up the actual ceiling of my home. Without the enchanting table in the way, the upstairs was so much more open now. I also found my first pickaxe of the world and named it accordingly. And of course, I hung it up in the library to display. Day 96, I placed leaves all over the buildings, and then bone mealed the hell out of the ground to add some more detail. Bone meal and leaves are the easiest way to add some detail to a build, so that's pretty much what I did all day. And by the end, it was looking 23.8725 times better. Don't ask me how I got that number. Day 97 was my last ditch effort to get as much ancient debris as possible. I had 14 TNT from buried treasure chests, and I wanted to explode it all. On my first blast mine, no ancient debris was exposed. But on my second attempt, there was also none. However, after strip mining for about 3 seconds, I found two pieces of ancient debris. And after even more strip mining, I found two more pieces. Day 98, I returned home and used the four ancient debris with gold ingots to make my third netherite ingot. And I fused it with my diamond leggings to upgrade them. I took as much wool and beds as I could backed into the nether for my final blast mining session. I already had two netherite scraps, so I only needed two ancient debris to make my final netherite ingot. And thankfully, it didn't even take two beds to find the final two blocks that I needed. I rushed home, smelted them, and made my last netherite ingot, and I upgraded my diamond boots with the new ingot. I know my helmet was still diamond, but I was still feeling great at this moment with three-fourths netherite armor. Day 99, I did a chore that I'd been meaning to do for a long time, lighting up the cave that was under my home. It was spawning a bunch of mobs, and I really needed to light it up. Don't ask me how I didn't realize that Fulbright was on at this point, but never mind that. I lit up a ton of the cave, hoping that mobs would spawn spawning under there, and I could finally live in peace above the land. Which led us to... Day 100. Even after our near-death experiences like 20 times, and despite all my unluckiness, I still managed to survive for 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore. I greeted my dogs and did the finishing touches of all of my projects. Heads he lives, tails he dies. It was heads, but I didn't care. I also killed his dumb spitmobiles, because they suck as well. I took a final look at the library, which held my dragon egg and my first pickaxe, and I visited Mason for the last time to gift those who would help me, like the Fletcher, Mending Villager, and of course, Mason. As a special gift to him, I let him out of his quarantine too. For my final destination, I visited my original day one home, and found some items in the chest that I'd left before going to fight the dragon. And as the sun set on that final day, I walked up my home stairs and took my final good night's rest to end off day 100. And that was all for the video. If you enjoyed, then consider liking and subscribing. Also, be sure to comment some dog name suggestions, because if I do make a 200 days video, then you may have your name featured. And that is it from me, so thank you for watching, I'm The Terrain, stay handsome.